Hi guys, Mr. John here. Saga continues. Let's pick another stereo to repair. And for this one, I decided to pick the lightest of the three. This one, which says Pioneer, but I highly doubt it. It is a bit less deep. Normally they are about this much. And it is very, very lightweight. So, again, I took some screws out and we pop the cover off and we obviously see that there is no tape transport. So that's the reason why it's light. And there is no optical drive either. So, all it does have is a FEM tuner, uh, SD card reader and a uh, USB capability thumb drive reader or something like that inside again visual inspection I don't see anything terribly wrong except one burnt up resistor surface mount resistor which I'm not sure will you see or not so I'm gonna take you off the stand And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Mm, where's the pencil? Let's focus on it. Okay, now there are two resistors near this part, which is 78M05, which is nothing else than a 7805 5 volt regulator in a D pack surface mount package. And besides it, there is this resistor which is a 4.7 ohm resistor in 1206 package which is connected uh, to the input of the regulator and the other side is connected to the next resistor which looks damaged looks like it's fried may very well be fried open so that's the reason why it doesn't work very likely so what I think happened here is I messed up the polarity and fried the resistor because there might be some polarity protection diodes further down the chain actually I see the one right here that's a polarity protection diode Cathode, the way it is installed, is it installed anti-parallel to the supply line? That means that in normal operation it won't conduct and everything is hunky-dory. And what is that anti-parallel configuration? Well, the cathode of it is connected to plus 12 volts from the battery. Not from the accessory, not from the ignition switch. The one that goes through the fuse to your battery. And that's important bit. It must go through a fuse, because when this diode conducts, it will conduct a lot of current. And uh, hopefully, if the fuse is there, and the fuse is a proper rating one, is the one which is properly rated for the application, it will blow and everything is going to be fine. Most likely, this diode will be messed up, but it will save all the other stuff. So, let me kill this damn fly. If you thought I'm joking, here is that bastard. It's glued shut to the ceiling, which is not a big problem because it's a shed. It will fall in a spring or something like that. It will fall down on its own. Okay, what I was talking about. Uh, okay, I have a few more flies nearby, but I'm gonna finish the video and then make a slayer oh. damn what was i talking about huh. the polarity protection in normal operation it doesn't do anything the cathode is on plus 12 volts the anode is on ground which is normally connected to the negative of your battery to the chassis or the vehicle everything is good okay I have some warnings on the screen. I might be running out of the memory, so I'm gonna try to keep it quick.
Okay, so how I test it. I take my lab power supply, which is current limited one. I set the current limit to about half an amp or one amp, something like that. Reasonable amount. I set it to 12.6 volts at the moment. Negative is on a uh, chassis of the device. And the positive I'm gonna connect to the cathode of that polarity protection diode, which is supposed to go to the battery through the fuse, remember? And I connect it. I see some sparks flying, but that is capacitor charging. And you have zero consumption, okay. That means that this chip is not busted, hopefully. It may be busted wide open and not shorted. We will test it later. But then, accessory input on this one, which is uh, goes from your ignition switch, go is this pin, which goes through the couple of resistors to this regulator so i think this regulator might be dead so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set my power supply to 5 volts and connect it to here to the output of the regulator this way i bypass the regulator and everything and if everything is fine i should see some life on the display so let me do just that i'm gonna go and hook the positive to the I'm gonna leave the negative right there and hook the positive to the output of the regulator now we turn on we see some consumption oh yeah and we see some life on the screen we try to turn it on it goes to the load apparently looking for some storage devices which it didn't found which it didn't find so it switches into the FM tuner the encoder works, nice. So do the buttons. Yeah, that looks alright to me. Seems okay. Now the next thing I do, switch off, is I go and put the this on the input of the regulator. And I will slow and I will put a multimeter on the output of the regulator and I will slowly bring the voltage up and see will it uh, stop rising at 5 volts. If it will, that means the regulator is alright. And the only problem is that burnt open resistor. Oh boy. I'm running out of memory. Hold on, hold on. Okay, for some bizarre reason, the last time it was set to record to the memory card, but now it all of a sudden it decided to save the file onto the memory of the phone, which it doesn't have many. So, I connect the, my power supply to the input of the regulator, as I mentioned, and I connect a digital multimeter to the output of the regulator, and I will slowly turn the voltage up and see if I can spot the regulator behaving as it should. Let me do a little setup with two multimeters so you will see each and every voltage. Well, two of them. Okay, here is the setup. The, this one shows the input voltage to the regulator, this one shows the output. Let me switch on the power supply. And you can see that at 5 volts in the output is 3.4 volts, well, that's completely normal, because it's not a low dropout regulator. The, uh, the input to it should be at least about 2.5 volts higher than the, your desired output. So let's slowly raise the voltage. 5.6, we're rising. 6.2, okay. Alright, 6.7, we are at 5.05. Let's slowly, 7.25, okay, I'm pretty confident at it, 14 volts, 5 volts, excellent, the regulator is intact, so, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go replace that resistor, unfortunately it is burnt so good, that I cannot read the marking on it, but uh, basically I'm going to replace that resistor with a 0 ohm jumper link, it will be alright. The purpose of that resistor, well, I think, 
it was there for um, to be a fusible link so in case an excess current is flowing through the chain it will burn open which it successfully did and the other 4.7 ohm resistor I guess is there for um, to dissipate some power on itself maybe it's a linear regulator so you can dissipate the power somewhere else like on an input or like on the resistor which is on the input of the of that regulator but I'm not entirely sure why they did that but whatever so I'm gonna do just that then I'm gonna try to power it up test each and every channel and then hook an antenna to it this lovely piece of wire and we will see is it working or not what I see straight away though is that this is not a true 4 channel amplifier it has just two small amount of pins on it I think it is a stereo amplifier and it's not a bridged amplifier why can I say that well because those two capacitors look suspiciously like a output decoupling capacitors so I think that's what they are that's your polarity protection diet that's some um, Eh, nah, decoupling capacitor, I don't know where it is. <laughs> that's a filter choke. And that's your main filtering capacitor. And some bypass caps, or maybe coupling caps to the RCA jacks, I don't know. But these two look suspiciously like the output capacitors. They are the same value, and they are suspiciously close to the chip and to the output. So let me do just that, and we will test each and every channel. Okay, the resistor is installed. Let's see if I can show you it. That's a resistor on the left. Not on the left. This one. You might be able to see that it says 0 ohm on it. However, I'm not sure. There we go. You can see it for sure. A little bit too much solder on the pads, uh, but that will do. And that's the regulator I was talking about. This zoom is provided to you by this little magnifying glass that I bought. Uh, well, it arrived today and it's pretty good actually. Very small, but quite a high magnification ratio. Makes an excellent zoom lens for the cheap ASMR uh, way. As the cheapest way to get a macro shots for the phone. Okay, so let's put it back together and see. Is it worth it? Well, does it work? Eh, whatever. Okay. Again, on this one, there is no seal screen which helps you understand which pin is what. But. The thing with these repairs that this is a general just couple of hints to help you on the way. Uh, uh, don't ask me how to repair exactly your model. Be especially like it doesn't work, you let the smoke out. What can happen? There are many many parts inside which can let the smoke out. So spare your time and don't write those kind of comments. This video is intended for hobbyists that uh, are amateurs that are for um, uh, for people who want to repair stuff themselves and have basic knowledge and, st and skills. So in this particular case, the positive is this one, and the accessory enable is this one or this one. It's kind of bizarre because, as you can see, this one goes through the track into 4.7 ohm resistor and into the input of the regulator. This one, however, goes through this resistor that I replaced, then it goes into the 4.7 ohm resistor. Why? 
I don't know. Actually, I might know what that's about. That might be sort of power output to the active antenna, to the amplifier on it. So this, oh, what? One of these can be like, this is like uh, from your ignition switch, accessory enable, and this might be the active antenna. Easy. And since I already mentioned that this is a dual channel amplifier and it has a decoupling capacitor, so one of the wires from, the cap from your speaker should be connected to ground and the other one you can just probe around and try to burn your speaker while you're doing that. <laughs> I already almost burned this speaker in the previous video where I, when I connected the output of a bridge amplifier to ground through this speaker which has an offset which is equal to the half a supply rail very nice video so positive 12 volts to both input from the battery and to the accessory enable okay the crocodile clip fits extremely well there. <laughs> and the negative 12 volts. Whoa, 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 what's happened? 30 milliamps consumption. We have a time on the screen. That's nice. Can you see it? You can. Now we turned on. Let me try. Eh, it's all right. We're gonna look for the static right now. Make sure that the volume is reasonably high. The maximum is 39 for some bizarre reason. So I'm gonna set it to about 25. Beautiful. And as I mentioned, one end to the, of the speaker to the ground another end uh -huh, to the output mm, to do it the right way I really should go and grab another capacitor should enough okay so one end to the ground another end to the through a capacitor to whatever pin you probe this way if I touch the positive 12 volts somewhere it ain't gonna send 12 volts through the speaker and destroy it. Well, it ain't, it ain't gonna send 12 volts to the speaker, which will make 12 over 8 equals to that amount of amps flowing through the speaker and destroying it as in the process. Okay, we're gonna go and connect the negative end to the, of the capacitor to the speaker, the other end of the speaker to the chassis, and see, that's when I touch the positive 12 volts. It first, the first it uses here and here a thump in the speaker from the speaker, and you will see the cone moving, but then it will decay. As the capacitor charges up and doesn't conduct current anymore. And if you then discharge a capacitor, it will make the cone move another way. That is how the decoupling cap works in the simple amplifier. Uh -huh. I don't see an output uh, at the moment. Uh, where is it? Where is that bastard? Huh. That's 12 volts. That's ground. So this 4 must be output, but I don't hear anything to ground. So bizarre. Let's try this one and this one. Zero. This one and this one. 
Okay. Uh, the amplifier must. It's either I am an idiot or the amplifier is dead. Which one? Well, I guess to know that I need to take the board out. I hope you can see, see what I'm talking about. I need to take the board out and pay my time and do it right. Damn it. I thought at least something would be a piece of cake. No. Okay, actually on the other side it does have a seal screen. I'm gonna show you it right now. Okay, you can see it. So it says that this one is rear right, rear right positive and rear right minus. And as you can see here, the rear right positive is connected through this track to the front left positive. Wait, what? Oh, excuse me, to the front right positive. So the right on the rear and right on the front is connected together. And that is because this is a dual channel amplifier, not a four channel. As I told you from the start. So this is output indeed. And uh, so that's an output, it's a right one and that's a left one. And if you take your time and you look at, at the track which comes to it, that's, this track connects the front to the rear and this track goes over here to this device which is 47, 470 microfarad. 16 volt capacitor, other side of which goes to the chip. <gasps> what a surprise! Ay, ay, ay. So it is indeed what I was talking about. How can this be true? How Johnny can say something that it is true? Ay, ay, ay. So, what I think happened here is maybe the chip is burned or maybe it just doesn't receive a signal which t which tells it to turn on uh, so i'm gonna go and first i'm gonna go and measure the voltage on these capacitors not after it but i'm gonna measure the voltage on the pin of the capacitor which goes to the chip with respect to ground and there I should see a half a supply rail. So let me do just that. Okay, negative the multimeter to ground as I mentioned. Positive of the multimeter. I'm gonna turn the stereo on. Okay, it says it's in tuner. It's in radio mode and I'm gonna put the uh, positive probe of the multimeter to the output of the chip and there I see 0.78 volts well that doesn't sound good the same on this one not good because it is indeed now I'm completely sure that that's just your ordinary amplifier with a um, decoupling capacitor on the output well it depends on how you look at it it's a dc decoupling capacitor and at the same time it's an ac coupling capacitor funny so let me probe the voltages on the other pins this one is about four volts kind of bizarre well you might whatever that's an, an output, it's another output, it's ground, uh, that's some another reference voltage or whatever. Get the hell out of here you piece of flying crap. And ground, 
that's my supply and that's another kind of reference or whatever maybe it's not a reference maybe it's a inverting input of the amplifier which is connected through a divider to the output uh, bizarre very bizarre but okay now that I tested that, I take a closer look at the circuitry and I see a little transistor-like device near the power amplifier. Hope you can see it. That's the device I, was, I am talking about. This SOT23 3-pin package. It says 1 a.m. on it, so it's highly likely that that's a 2930-4 NPN transistor, generic, general purpose one in the SMD package. Okay. It has a resistor, 10K resistor to its base, other end of which is going to... Uh, is going somewhere <laughs> and the collector of it is I can't see the track that's too bad you know what let me reverse engineer it a little bit and I will come back to you okay I did a little bit of reverse engineering and I came up with an ingenious idea to look at the other side uh, of the board and look for some text there and I f there I found this mute so that transistor is a um, this uh, pin mute comes through a 10k resistor to the base of this transistor which pulls one pin of the chipped ground and this way activates the mute function the goddamn neighbor's dog if it's not a fly it's a freaking dogs i'm gonna go first i'm gonna go pick the dog then i'm gonna go and uh, search the data sheet for the part because i think this chip is dead so let me get the proper look at the data sheet okay i did some searching through the data sheet i did found one i did find one that's nice and this chip is a dual channel amplifier the schematic is very simple pin 3 of it is supposed to be half a, um, a regulator that is output of which is set to half the supply rail that's essentially a, a virtual ground point for the negative for the inverting input of the amplifier and that pin hopefully you can see the meter the scene is turned on so the supply is here as you can see and the pin 3 is 0.6 volts that's not good is it so i first i thought that um, it was muted and that's why it doesn't turn on so i went and jumped 12 volts into pin 8 which is in, in this case is a standby slash mute pin if you pull it high, it is turned on, the amplifier. And if you pull it low, it is in standby or mute. Right now I have it hooked with a piece of wire, which you may, be pro may probably be able to see. Let me show you up close. This is a piece of wire. The phone just refuses to focus. 
because it is a piece of crap. But long story short, this amplifier chip is dead because it should be. It should here should be half a supply, and I don't have it. Oh, the lead came off. Here should be half a supply, which is about uh, I don't know six point something volts at twelve volts. 6.45 should be here, which is definitely not. Uh, well, you know what? I'm thinking maybe if I go and I pull that, if I go and whack a resistor divider uh, on that pin, maybe it will work. Let me do just that. Uh, I don't think it will. Maybe that output is shorted and will pull the voltage down, but it's worth trying. Two resistors are installed there, 22k each, to make a virtual ground, and if I probe it, I get a bit more, 0.76, but that's not the way it should be. That output is indeed burnt up. Too bad, the chip is not very common. I will take a look, if I find a replacement I will replace it. Not so quick though, I decided to see, is there any signal coming to the amplifier? Is it worth buying a chip for this or making another amplifier? Because if the front this is not, doesn't work, it doesn't worth it, it's not worth it. So, I have this amplified speaker, which doubles as a um, super probe receiver, and just an amplified speaker, and also um, a super probe, Mr. Carlson super probe plugs into it and allows me to sniff the audio, which I might do actually. But first I'm gonna show you that there is indeed audio coming from the control circuitry I'm gonna go to this and you listen I'm connecting it here and volume works another channel another channel Let's say channel 1 and channel 2. Both work excellent. So is so does the tuner. Tuner works as well. Now I'm gonna try to use Mr. Carlson Super Probe to sniff the audio that way without uh, direct contact, just for the fun of it. The video is already long, isn't it? Okay, Super Probe connected and not a big surprise. Not so loud, but you can hear it. I'm gonna put it here and... So I... Oi, 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 oi. Some feedback going on there. <laughs> but... Not a big problem, as you can see, this device is very useful and allows me to sniff the presence of audio in the ribbon cables, no problem. I had to crank up the volume all the way though, but that is perfectly fine, because this uh, ribbon cable carries line output level signal, which is not that large and being able to sniff it without contact just by capacitive coupling uh, that is coupled to this little exposed piece of coax is very very fascinating so that's that i don't know if what i'm gonna do with it now i'm gonna say the guy that uh, it the 
power amplifier and this one is shut so I will try to find this exact IC and if I can't I will say to him that I can replace it with another amplifier an additional board that I'm gonna put in here but it's gonna cost him pretty penny <laughs> if he will say yes I will do it if he will agree to my price if he won't this thing will go somewhere else that if I won't be able to find this IC I may be able we will see whether or not I will be able to find that IC oh my that is guys 1 a.m. so thanks for watching see ya